The natural process for a creek like Miller's Creek is to gradually fill in. And it's done so naturally, or does so naturally. Water comes in carrying with it sediment. And that water flows in, deposits the sediment, and then the water flows back out. But it's a very gradual process. So the natural progression of a creek is to gradually fill in, become a marsh, etc. What happens in Miller's Creek, however, is that we've, we've accelerated the process. Man has caused increased sedimentation in the creek. And so what happens over time is a creek like Miller's Creek, which would normally flush fairly regularly, begins to fill in, and that slows down that flushing rate, lowers the water quality, limits the habitat. And so what used to be a habitat for fish and manatees now becomes more of a mud flat. One of the consequences of our man's activities has been that we tend to put herbicides, pesticides. Um, we used to burn lead in our gasoline. That debris falls on the ground. It runs in the river. So the river itself, and particularly areas like Miller's Creek, the tributaries, become an accumulation site for heavy metals and toxic materials. So that sediment, in addition to being increasing in depth and silting in, also contains pollutants. It's what we call sublethal toxicity. In other words, it doesn't kill the animal outright, but it impacts the, re the way the animal reproduces. So the larvae don't, don't develop as well. The eggs don't develop as well. In reality, there's not a huge impact on marine life because of the toxic materials. They're tied up in the sediment. They're part of the food chain, and so it does get into the fish. Um, it does cause some, as I mentioned earlier, reproductive problems. The biggest concern, frankly, is the loss of habitat. As we've bulkheaded our wetlands, we filled in these grasslands, we filled in, we found these creeks filling in. They no longer become habitat for the fish and the crabs and the shrimp and the manatees, things that need that space. So it's more the habitat destruction than the pollutants that I think cause a concern for something like Miller's Creek. Part of what happens too along a creek like this is that normally the creek has a very slow sloping slot side and that side has grasses and marshes and as part of it. But what we've done, particularly in Miller's Creek, is we've filled in that marsh, we've bulkheaded, and we have a tendency to have that runoff go straight into the creek as opposed to being filtered through the grass. The other thing that happens is all the upland construction has run into the river. Well, once that construction is over, then you've got streets and driveways and yards, and people start cutting the grass, letting the grass grow into the street. That washes into the storm drains. The storm drains come into the river. The sediment on the roads come into the river. And what you end up with is more and more sediment coming into the river faster and faster and faster. The good news right now is that the toxic levels in the St. John's are not alarming. They're, they're high. We want to be pay attention to them. We want to be careful how we clean them up. It's not reached the point that we're going to say, oh, this is a toxic waste dump. We've got to be very careful about it. It's not of, a, of such a level right now that I'm alarmed, but I am concerned. The solution to something like this is what we call eco-restoration. Uh, is to go in and effectively clean out that sediment, remove that debris that's been coming into the river. But before you do that, you've also got to make sure that you've stopped any upland source from coming into the river. It doesn't make sense to go in and clean it out while you've still got all the stuff coming in. So combined with eco-restoration, dredging out the creek, you also need to do things like improve street sweeping, uh, educate people about not blowing debris into the yards, uh, try to be more conscious of what flows into the river, into Miller's Creek, once you've done that eco-restoration. We've been looking at this now for a number of years and have recommended this creek be eco-restored, that we go in and clean it out and try to install programs that would reduce the amount of sedimentation going into the creek itself. That includes increased street sweeping, education for people what they do with their lawns, you want to reduce the amount of fertilizer you're using, herbicides, pesticides. Though there needs to be, in addition to the, the dredging effort, eco-restoration, also an education effort to minimize future impacts from people. Improving Miller's Creek will, in fact, improve the St. John's River. Um, and it'd be great if we could have other communities in the area do the same thing to their creeks.